and welcome to another edition of Currently in Quincy. I'm Joe Catalano. On today's program, we will catch up with Kelly Cobble from the Quincy Art Association. First, though, as always, we check news for you. In Quincy, the city remains in the yellow category under the state's risk assessment map for the coronavirus. There were 60 active cases confirmed as of Friday with nine new cases. There have been 135 deaths. That number has not changed for three months. Other news, Stewart Healthcare still has to prove to the state that health care in Quincy will not be adversely affected when they close the emergency department at the former Quincy Medical Center. Now, Stewart says it will close the ER on November 1st when their lease with Fox Rock Properties of Quincy runs out. Fox Rock is not renewing that lease because they want to tear down the former hospital to make way for a new housing development. Now, Stewart says they do not intend to relocate the emergency room. They say Quincy will still be well served by emergency rooms at Kearney, Milton and South Shore hospitals and by urgent care centers in Quincy and Braintree. But some nurses argue that a city the size of Quincy needs a 24 hour emergency room. When the former Quincy Medical Center is torn down, communications equipment for the Quincy Police and Fire Departments that are on the roof will also be gone. The administration is seeking $3.65 million for a new state-of-the-art communication system to replace the aging system. Now, the new system would include a 150-foot tower at the new dog park off of Quarry Street, plus some smaller stations at Pagnano Towers, the water tower on Rusciutti Drive over at North Quincy High School, and at the Hausneck and Squantum Fire Stations. The City Council's Finance Committee is currently reviewing that proposal. Federal regulators are reviewing operations at that controversial natural gas compressor station in North Weymouth after two recent emergency shutdowns during testing. This past Saturday, protesters called the Red Rebels joined Alice Arena from the Four River residents against the compressor station and Senator John Keenan of Quincy in calling for that station to be closed permanently. We're down here today with the Red Rebels, and this is a, a silent protest and a sign that we're not going anywhere. We are not going to stop this fight until this becomes a stranded asset for Enbridge, until it becomes an empty shell of a building that they cannot operate. We're not going anywhere. It's a beautiful Saturday here, and we're at the uh, compressor station project at the Four River Basin. And as beautiful a day it is, you look around, and you realize that this just isn't a good location for this facility. We've got houses just right across the river here. We've got O'Brien Towers just across the river. It's such a dangerous location. And it's been shown over the last couple of weeks that the operators here and those constructing it, they've had some problems. They've had some unintended releases and uh, showing that this is a real threat to this community. And so I'm happy to join with these folks and raise our voices. And we've tried at the state level. There's efforts still ongoing at the federal level. And we're just gonna keep trying. To, to, to shut this down and to, to protect the communities here in the basin. On September 11th, workers shut the station down due to a gasket failure. And then last Wednesday, the station went into an automatic emergency shutdown. And natural gas was released into the atmosphere during both shutdowns. Enbridge Energy says they are committed to making sure that that facility is safe. Those four girls whose pictures were found in the file of a 36-year-old murder case in Florida have been identified. Police say tips from the public helped them identify all four girls and the girl that they were addressed to, Jen or Jenny. Police say the photos may not be relevant to the case of the murder of 15-year-old Colleen Orsburn in 1984, but merely the contents of a lost wallet. Officials were able to determine that the pictures were taken by Miller Studio of Quincy and that all the girls were 1981 graduates of Whitman Hanson High School. Investigators thank the public for their assistance. They say they will continue to investigate that cold case in Florida. Coming up, we will chat with Kelly Cobble from the Quincy Art Association about their fall classes. That's next.
Back in with Kelly Cobble of the Quincy Art Association to find out uh, how they're coping during this challenging time and some plans that they have uh, for the future. Hey, Kelly, nice to see you again. Good morning. How are you? We're doing well here. It's nice uh, to see you stationary. Last time we talked, you were a passenger in a moving vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You never know. You never know. So um, that was, I think that was like my one major outing of the, of the COVID. So uh my son and I had a nice day down the Cape, so what can I tell you, right? No, well, that's great. <laughs> Unexpected. <laughs> Happy to be part of it, for sure. <laughs> that's right. Thank you for going with the groove. <laughs> Absolutely. So, But I'm here, and I'm sheltered from the storm, as, as, uh, as we know right now. So let's hope, let's hope we got the rain that we needed a little bit, and, um, you know, I guess blowing in those autumn, autumn colors. <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, seasons are changing for sure. Unfortunately, you know, what would have been a hallmark of the fall here in Quincy, of course, would, would have been Arts Fest, but that oh, couldn't happen. I know, I can't believe it. I can't believe it, yeah. So, um, but, you know, we are still, we're still kicking, and thank you for, um, you know, having an interest in us and uh, keeping us on the board. So, uh, we are here. We've been very active, obviously, uh, with social media. So um, we've, we keep coming up with different themes and different ideas for people to, to show their art. And anybody is welcome to follow our Facebook and our Twitter feed, as well as Instagram. And we have some talented artists that are keeping those social media um, vehicles going. So please, anybody is welcome to follow us and join us. All they have to do is, um, you know, message us and Paula will put them on Facebook, Wendy on Instagram and your own Carol on our Twitter feed. Super. So, um, so that's been terrific. And I think it's been a nice way to keep a sense of community, which is what we really, um, want to do with the art association that's really our mission is to bring people together who have an interest and a desire to make art and show art so and what better time to make people uh maybe think about other things besides uh what's in the news every day so um but i will say we we do have a bittersweet um campaign going on now and that is we have a tribute to Mr. Keneally, the wonderful musician, um, musical inspiration to so many children, so many students and so many adults in the community. So we have put out the challenge for again anybody, not just an artist and not just associated with the Quincy Arts, we want anybody to share their work that they've created, uh, whether it be photography, drawing, uh, painting, could be mosaics, it could be, you know, any medium. Um, join us if you've created or are so inspired to create a piece that celebrates music. And just like we were just talking a few minutes ago, you know, we're missing out on the symphony and the Quincy Choral Society. So if anybody out there uh, is associated with those groups, you know, come on, try on a different hat <laughs> and uh, create a visual work of art that we can share and, and embrace. So we're very excited about that. <clears throat> and if you have any questions, you can always contact us at quincyartma.org uh, <clears throat> or quincyartma at yahoo.com or follow us on the, on the social media feeds. So again, we're very excited about it. Some of our members, uh, as well as the board members, um, had a, a long-term uh, relationship with him. His, their children, you know, were inspired by his generosity and his kindness. And I was. I got to work with him on def different occasions uh, in the arts community. And he just put it all out there, Joe. He really, really did. And so... Um, this is the least that we can do is just to try to keep his memory alive and broaden the scope of of what the arts mean to to so many people. So yeah. we're excited and yeah. uh, thank nice. you for giving us this this um, way to to share it.
Sure, yeah, for folks who, who are not aware, Rich Keneally, a uh, longtime uh, Quincy Public Schools uh, music teacher, uh, and inspired many, many, many de- different generations uh, of, of uh, musicians that went on to, you know, further their careers or just play uh, uh, as an amateur, um, you know, hobby, um, but a, a kind, gentle man uh, mm-hmm. who succumbed to COVID-19, um, along with his wife, too, um, this past year, too. So I know that um, he... Uh, will be missed by, by many, many generations uh, of folks. I had a pleasure of uh, working and meeting him several times as well. And you could really feel um, the passion that he had both for music, but also for his students, you know, and yes. wanted to wanted to share that with them. He truly sure. was a teacher in the true sense of the word. And he was also a key component to the theater program that is so successful here in Quincy. You know, the schools, both high schools, and I'm sure even the middle schools, you know, wouldn't have had the success that they've had without his ungiving, you know, un, unconditional generosity and, and, and talents that he gave. So I, I know that he will be uh, something that will be missed, but I think we're in good hands. We have the next generation that's, that's stepping up and moving forward. So we embrace it all, really. Sure. So where will the displays in his honor be kind of portrayed, Kelly? It's well, we again, it's all virtual, right. um, unfortunately. And so we have it on again, all of our social media um, we- vehicles, uh, but also we're hoping to maybe pull together um, a nice tribute for our website. And you know, Tony and his wonderful talents, um, he has been actually curating a gallery on our website. Oh. So any I, uh, any visuals that he comes across that people submit, if he thinks it, he can make it work, um, somehow he does, you know, it has to be a certain quality of image. Mm-hmm. And if he can put it up there, he does. Um, and he's made a gallery on our website. And we're hoping to have like a page of tributes to him, kind of the you know, a combination of portraits or musical inspirations. We've already seen quite a variety, everything from uh, still lifes with pianos and musical notes to portraits, uh, sketching, everything. We've really already, just in a couple of weeks' time, have seen quite a variety. So he will take what he can and um, make a nice little, um, again, gallery of of it on our website. Yeah. We also have a long-standing teacher, an artist friend of ours, Edwina Catchy. Oh, sure. And I'm sure the name is familiar. She was always featured in our shows. And unfortunately, she has announced her retirement. Um, mm. She's just physically not able to, to, to paint and uh, show like she used to. And she was very um, famous for her portraits of rock and roll stars yes. and um, tango oh, dancers. Yeah. Exactly. David Bowie, J- Mick Jagger, all kinds. So um, we are trying to pull together some uh, very good images of her work. And we hope to add that as our personal tribute as well. So, um, so please, everybody come look at the Quincy Arts, uh, ma.org, uh, Quincy Arts website and find us and enjoy the art. You know, we can't get out physically as much and we are not having our shows, unfortunately, but you can um, still enjoy the fruits of the wonderful, talented people that we have in this area. So please um, celebrate really with us um, as we go through this. Yeah, absolutely. You might be aware, um, Kelly, about the uh Quincy Cultural Memories uh, projects that the city is embarking, asking folks to submit um, their experiences of life in Quincy during the pandemic. Have you seen yes. that at the Art Association? We have been promoting that as well. We okay. want our um, friends and members to to contribute to that because we think it's a great way to leave a legacy. So yes, we do keep um, reminding our folks about that. So I think it's a, a great idea. I think I have my photograph that I took to submit and haven't done it yet. So, yep. <laughs> so shame on me. 
Um, but there's no but, deadline, so folks can no, do it any time. Right, right. It's Not that we don't memory. all wish this. <laughs> right, that, right. We want it to be over, but, yeah. you know, right. But it, it, we can keep it, we can let it live on in, in memory and legacy, right. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll give folks something else to do rather than worry, <laughs> you know. Well, <laughs> create some art instead. Right, right. I have uh, told all my friends to say, yeah, get over yourselves, get outside. I, I've told them, I've told people, just come grab a chair and pull up to uh, Pageant Field or down at the beach and just enjoy the beauty, enjoy nature. That's that's what you can do. Go by yourself, go with a friend. Mm -hmm. You know, just get out of the house and um, start and get away from media, I guess, except for good social media <laughs> curated and, by the Quincy Art Association. And, and QA TV, of course. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. But um, That's true. Yeah, yeah, people need to really um, get out. And I, to segue to that, I will say we did have a very small, successful group of some of our artists go out and do plein air painting um, oh. during the summer. And maybe if we have some decent weather, they'll get out again. And, um, and again, it's just uh, something that we do advertise through our Facebook page. And that is um, just going out, picking a spot and getting together and bringing your supplies. Again, it can be a pencil and a pad of paper, or it can be your little paint set, whatever it is, or, if it, or a camera. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's just, again, camaraderie and making art um, where we can. And so that has been lovely. And I hope some of that, well, I know some of that artwork has been up on our website. So, um, and I will say, I will use that as another segue to say that uh, Morgan Davis is one of the artists that does spearhead that group. And she is also one of our instructors at the Quincy Art Association. And she will be offering a class uh, this fall, starting in a couple of weeks, uh, the week of October 12th, um, Friday evenings. She will be hosting a class in the building. We're being very, very cautious. We can only allow three uh, or four students per class. And um, we will be offering three in-house classes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, We'll have an introduction to drawing. Um, Morgan will be uh, teaching oils and acrylic on Friday evenings. And we'll also have three students down in our pottery uh, studio with the windows and doors open. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's tough because we have a dedicated following of um, the studio, uh, the pottery workers and our uh, or artists and um, it was it's hard to harness them so what we're doing is um, for the three of our classes we're keeping them short we're doing for only four weeks so that um, you know gives time for the students to maybe learn or practice on on a good piece uh, with the instructor um, but then you know we'll we'll either try to follow it up with another mini session um, or maybe they can follow it up online or whatever the arrangements may be. But we thought it would be safe to keep it a very limited um, physical space and then keep it limited as far as the weeks go. So it's disappointing for us not to have a lot of buzz uh, going on in the building, but we're very excited to at least start very slowly and, um, you know, see what we can do to invite people to come together because we do feel that or we've heard um, the demands of uh, people really wanting to to do art with other people uh, some just don't have the confidence to do it on their own so it sits idle others enjoy just enjoy the camaraderie and it's what they do in their life to enrich their their experiences so um, we wanted to try to provide a space that we could and, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Sure. I'm assuming folks would have to sign up or pre-register for those, Kelly? Yes, okay. yes. So again, go to any of our outlets, our um, emails or our website, and you can do that. Uh, we do all, we are offering at least one 
online class, mm -hmm. and that's the Japanese ink wash class with Tamara. And um, that is a very um, unique experience. So it's a very slow and uh, meditated, made it meditated, meditative mm -hmm. right. <laughs> um, experience. <clears throat> so um, she has a great uh, training and is very enthusiastic about that type of, of work. So she is willing to offer it that online and mm -hmm. um, has been practicing, has made some YouTube videos herself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's uh, should be an interesting experience. I'm going to try to Commit myself yeah. to that one. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Right, right. So, um, so, so we'll see. And then um, for our members, normally we have monthly meetings where we either have a live demonstration or we have a lecture or some kind of talk, inspirational of art. And we're actually going to have Tamara doing a again, a virtual art appreciation offerings uh, for our members. And that's what we will be doing for our programming, at least for the next couple of months. I'll have her do maybe every other month. This month, of course, we participated with the library just this week on the Norman Rockwell um, talk, which was fascinating mm. in his um, Norman Rockwell and how he came to become a, a staunch supporter of um, diversity mm -hmm. and how the, the company that the Saturday Evening Post would not let him portray any African-Americans or anybody of other color mm -hmm. um, unless in, in other roles. And so um, he ultimately had to quit his position and become a more independent worker so that he could express himself more freely and be more of an advocate for uh, civil rights and human rights. So that was a very inspirational uh, talk that the library hosted, but they were kind enough to invite us in and be co-hosts so that we could expand it to our audience. And um, so it was a great, great uh, afternoon, uh, evening. So hopefully, uh, like I said, we'll pick up with Tamara um, either next month or in November okay. and, um, and people, she's actually going to take people for a virtual tour of her favorite pieces at the museum of fine arts. Oh, so, okay. Very nice. Yeah. Right. So, well, uh, so good. You able to, to offer quite a bit, even given the circumstances. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We, we try, we really yeah. do. So I'm guessing again, we're all person. volunteers. So yeah, you can only right. pull from <laughs> that's, that's so good. much. Um, and the in-person uh, classes, I'm guessing all the proper uh, guidelines for safety, right, will be in place. Absolutely. Everybody will have to have their temperature checked and to sign in. And every, of course, we've been keeping it clean and sanitized. Uh, yeah. Nobody except for really... Uh, a couple of us have been in there at all. And um, yep, we have it all written out. And um, if there are any questions, again, uh, we'll, we'll be there to, to answer them. Mm -hmm. Is there um, a cost associated at all, Kelly? Yes, yes, we will be having a, a regular, um, you know, fees because yep. we do have to pay the teachers. Uh, all of the um, supplies people will have to get on their own okay. and the supply list will be under the registration um, description okay. on our website. So um, yes, please contact us. We can send out um, you know, a, a flyer that uh, describes the classes or you can just go on to the web and, and see it for yourself. Okay. Enjoy Tony's uh, creative design yes. and colorful. <laughs> yes, he's doing a great job on the website. If folks haven't seen it, uh, they really ought to. It looks it looks great. Um, so I'm sure that the, the galleries he creates will be just as just as stunning. Right, right. I know. I think he he he's missing his. Uh, usually, he designs you know his two posters. I should actually have him design a poster for the arts fest that we didn't have, just to have it in our archives. <laughs> great idea, actually. It yeah, will be, it will be sad to have a. a missing you know an empty box there so yeah, yeah i'll have to have them get back to work <laughs> yeah exactly 
So while I know, you know, also that that event is typically um, something that artists depend on for a little bit of income and that the Art Association depends on as well. So uh, there's there's that to consider. Right, right. And that's why we thought, you know, we can offer a few classes and see if we can just kind of keep things going. You know, if if these artists and instructors are teaching, then, you know, they don't have a way of other way of really, you know, supporting themselves if they're trying to stick with their art. So we like to give them a vehicle if we can. Yeah. Have you heard about what other art associations are doing in the area at all, Kelly? Um, a combination of things. Okay. Milton has been uh, kind of up and running for mm -hmm. the fall. So they've done outdoor um, events and we've and inside as well. Um, some of the other art associations are like us, just offering virtual mm -hmm. uh, programming, really. They haven't been able to offer the classes. So again, we'll reach out to them and make sure that uh, they know that we're opening the building to a small, very small capacity and whatever they can, you know, however they can use it with us, we're more than happy to partner with them. Great. Okay. So again, in-person classes start October 12th. Uh, yes. Artma.org. And anything else we should touch on? Um, no, I don't think so. Again, just, uh, you know, uh, sad to say we, we're living in a virtual world for the most part, but we're offering a tiny bit of, um, you know, physical presence. So very cautiously and um, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. We're, we'll be very understanding you know, if somebody does sign up and isn't comfortable, you know, we'll, we'll do what we have to do. But that's why we went with shorter, um, a shorter commitment yeah. so that if we have to be, if we're interrupted <laughs> uh, like we were in the spring, um, you know, we might be able to pick up where we left off, you know, in a couple of weeks, couple of months, mm -hmm. whatever it may be. Yeah. Um, but we won't be leaving people hanging with weeks ahead of them, you know, so Okay. So we're going going cautiously. Yes, uh, might be a good time for folks who have uh, extra time on their hands to, you know, uh, attend, attend to that budding artist that they think they might have or, or and, at least find a new yes. hobby. Right. That's what we that's what we were hoping. You know, again, all of our instructors uh, teach at all levels. They're welcoming to all levels. And um, it's very much at your own pace. So some of our veterans... Uh, use it to just finesse their uh, techniques. And again, just sometimes for companionship, mm -hmm. they really almost don't take uh, the instruction except for, you know, whatever suggestions another eye wants to make as far as colors or shading or perspective, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, again, we, we, uh, we're almost like that one room classroom. <laughs> we get all, uh, all levels. And uh, again, the instructors are patient and kind and talented and really know how to just, you know, give a little bit or, or give a lot if they have to. Yeah, that's great. And I know teachers always uh, learn something in the process as well. While Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's, that's, their, that's their give and take. They're all, they were all knocking on our door, really, um, all summer, you know, to do something. And uh, again, we were just, we're very cautious. I, I, res I regret a little bit that we didn't um, do more to maybe do more activities outside the building when we had the weather, but everybody was distracted. You know, I'm still working <laughs> full time right. and um, the weekends have been filled up just trying to keep the building going and, um, you know, keep the bills paid and et cetera. Right. So um, we, you know, we didn't get it off the ground, but we might. Um, the uh, group, Quincy for transformative change has have also approached us to to do some events. And so we are hoping that we can uh, maybe do a pumpkin uh, painting or more uh, stone painting um, events just to get people out and just to have, again, a sense of camaraderie. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll advertise it if if we can pull it off. We'll um, we'll be doing it. OK, so that's that's coming up. Okay, great. So again, stay tuned to your social media and your websites uh, yes. for uh, latest information. Yes.
All right. So good to see you, Kelly. Uh, really appreciate your time. Thank you, Joe. Great to see you. And thank you so much for your, uh, your generosity and interest in us. We, uh, we really appreciate it. You're very welcome. It's our pleasure. Hopefully um, next time we can uh, get together in person. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. All right. Have a great day. A great autumn, autumnish day. <laughs> you too. Be well. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Special thanks to Kelly Cobble for joining us today. Thanks to our crew and thank you for watching. And a reminder, please participate in the Quincy COVID Memories Project. Just send in your photos, your videos, your artwork, other life experiences here in Quincy during the pandemic. Go to quincyculturalmemory.com or you can mail them to the Thomas Crane Library. Attention local history at 40 Washington Street, Quincy 02169. And do visit our website, too, qatv.org. You'll find our latest programs there, news and information, information about free online classes, video on demand, live streaming, and much more. For all of us here at Quincy Access Television, I'm Joe Catalano. Please stay safe.